five of you are gonna have an opportunity to win a Lube Shuttle homeowner's greasing system in the month of March. We're gonna tell you how you can do that later on. And if you don't wanna wait, you can still go to Lube Shuttle's website, use code GWT, save 5%, stick around till the end. We'll tell you how you can still get entered and potentially get reimbursed. Now this is only for the month of March, 2023. Folks, time is precious. You read some of these daily checklists that you're supposed to do on your tractor. By the time you get done with it, it's time for dinner. You can't get any work done. So today we'll cover five tips that you can do in under five minutes. Make sure your tractor is in tip top shape and get you on your way. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is grease and you're getting off easy because you don't have to do this every single time you're getting on your tractor. Typically every 10 hours or so of loader use. Uh, there's only seven different grease zerks on the tractor itself. Obviously there's a lot more than that in the loader. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus, I think a couple, uh, yeah, on the skid steer quick attach, so 11, 22 <laughs> on the loader, seven points on the tractor. But again, not daily, but it's not like it's every 50 hours. It's kind of in the middle there and something you don't want to forget about. Let's tackle it really quick. Now, if you're not familiar with this system, this is Lube Shuttle, all right? A completely different way to grease, a lot smarter way. They put a lot of thought into developing a greasing system that was pain-free. And this one here doesn't have the plunger, the spring in the plunger, that's a pain to prime, prone to leaking all over the place. And it makes you wanna just give up and not even bother with grease and then you'll get to it another time. So what you have going on here are gonna be screw in cartridges. These are a very, whoops, actually gotta take the cover off first. Has a protective cover on it. We'll remove that, okay, set that aside. And you're gonna see screw in cartridges, all right? So these are reusable and recyclable. They're recyclable because they, use 99 point something percent of the grease that's in the tube. If you take a look inside there, come on cameraman, get a good shot. There is a plunger system in here. It's a vacuum based system. And I think they have a good picture of it too, where that plunger actually comes up and fully pushes out right into the neck up here. So this is a one inch collar on there, very strong, not gonna be prone to snapping off and breaking, but a vacuum based system. This thing is German engineered, and so you can see how easy it is just to take it apart, put it back together if you're switching tubes, whatever else. You just push that plunger up so you have that vacuum. That's how this thing operates. So when you squeeze this lever handle here, there's suction involved, and it's just kind of pushing the grease right on through. Awesome to use. They do have a battery-powered electric grease gun as well that we have used uh, in the past. Quite a bit more expensive, but a very nice option to have, especially if you have arthritis in your hands or just have trouble uh, squeezing the trigger over and over. This is a nice engine compartment right here. You can see how you have nice, easy, ready access to the battery. The 1025 could learn a lesson or two from this one right here. But two things you can check real quick underneath here. Now this is a bit seasonal or seasonally dependent. In the winter time, you're not gonna have too much dust and debris collection underneath here, at least in Northern climates like Michigan where we're at. But come summertime, it can be a, a dusty, nasty mess out there. So we've got this little screen here sitting in front of your radiator, all right? And you can see right now, this time of year, nothing much on there. But come a different time of year, spring, summer, and even fall, this can be clogged full of stuff, especially if you're working in the dirt, brush hogging fields, all that kind of thing. So clean that off, super easy to do if your engine is prone to overheating or just kind of on the high side of the temperature range, then this is a simple thing to check right here along with the next one. Back here we have our air filter. These are all a fairly similar design. We've got typically two of those little spring pins there. Oh, actually I forgot. I gotta take this band off here really quick. Um, what am I doing? What way do I wanna take that? Yeah, so this band is just kind of holding that in place. We'll take that off first. It's just got a loop on each end with a hook on there. That's all you're doing with that. Then you have a bit easier access. I mean, have a little flex there to uh, get your hand in there the right way. You can rotate that up. Get the nose out of there. This end, nothing really on it, nothing to do. Always good to check. And then you have your filter. And so these, Got to be careful. You don't want to damage it. It can be, um, well, you might think you want to blow in it with the hardest air you can, but you typically want to actually blow out. Put your air uh, nozzle in here and blow out through the fins. Kind of back the stuff out from where it's trying to get in. And this one here is uh, pretty dirty. They say you can clean them several times before you need to replace them. 
I've seen plenty dirtier ones than this. We're gonna throw it back in for now. A pretty cheap item to replace. There are some that have a dual uh, filter system, so an inner and outer core as well. I know the 1025 has that. Uh, a few others out there on the market too, so just be aware. Always good to have something like this as a spare on your shelf for when the time comes. There we go. Notice where it says top right here, obviously. Make sure that's facing, facing north before you tighten it down. Obviously a no-brainer checklist. Just take a very minimal amount of time. Check your engine oil level. We are good to go. Getting close to the uh, initial oil change though. Only a few hours away from that. And then your hydraulic level. So unless you see, back up here, if you have this parked on the same spot all the time and you don't see any engine oil on the ground underneath your tractor, well, there shouldn't be any change in oil level. Your hydraulic level can change, all right? And check both of these when your tractor's cool before you start using it. So after it's been sitting overnight or at least for a, an extended period of time, don't check it right after you've been using it. Hydraulic levels can change even if you don't see any hydraulic oil underneath the tractor, if you hook up a new hydraulic attachment to it, say a grapple or something on the three-point hitch, like a hydraulic rotation on a blower, I always use that as an example, typically there's not any fluid in those lines. And so it's going to kind of steal fluid because it becomes part of the same system as your tractor. And so you're going to have to end up topping off your hydraulic system if you do see a low level there because of that. Now, a lot of these just do pull right out. This particular one happens to be threaded in, which is okay. Get that cleaned off. Put it back down. Yeah, we are good to go. Just where we need to be. One last fluid level worth mentioning is going to be your coolant, all right? And so this is your, your overflow reservoir here, and you're going to see hot full level and a cold full level. So we're just a hair underneath there. We could add just a scotch, and we probably will. I just don't have any extra fluid here, I don't think. So we'll have to get some a little bit and uh, add it in there, but we're just about right where we need to be. And once you get into a rhythm of this stuff, this can take just a matter of minutes. Make sure you're good. Make sure nothing's changed. Things change out of the blue with tractors, right? So... I have things break all the time. It's not my fault, I promise. All right, so two things you can check with your wheels and your tires, air pressure. In fact, this can play a part in attachments not sitting level. We just did a video all about that. This is gonna be one of the primary reasons for that. It may look like it's the right air pressure, but looks can be deceiving. It just takes a second to check. The fronts on the Summit, they say, should be between 20 and 22 PSI. And we are at 31. <laughs> yeah, reading the same thing on here. Yeah, I decided to use this gauge here because I can let the air right out and watch that PSI go down. We were overfilled. I have no idea why. I've never added air to these tires. Here we go, 21, right in the middle. We'll see how that treats us moving forward. Good thing we're doing this. All right, 21 there as well. Now we're right in the sweet spot. All right, so the rears, a little bit different for us. These are loaded with liquid ballast called RimGuard. Again, great solution for adding ballast weight, planting your tractor to the ground, getting traction with the rear tires, just making life more efficient. It's an awesome solution. They're a channel sponsor of ours for good reason. Every tractor, in my opinion, needs it, so check them out. So what that means, though, is that the inside of these tires, right up to the top of the rim here, are filled with liquid ballast, okay? So if we check it here, liquid's gonna shoot out. So we wanna rotate these things 
to the 12 o'clock position, the valve stem's on there so we can check it that way, where it's just kind of right at that line of liquid ballast and air. And that's how you want to adjust it. If you have to add air pressure in there too, adjust at the 12 o'clock position, it's going to be a lot easier for you that way. Liquid ballast in your rear tires, you got to go about it a bit of a different way. Jack up the rear end. I know it is a bit more of a pain, but it takes the pressure off. Otherwise, with your liquid being right up here at the very top where the valve stem's at, it's going to make a mess, right? I mean, it still makes a little bit of a mess, not the end of the world. And you don't have to check it all the time, right? But getting a regular you know, routine of checking it out. So 16 to 14 PSI is where you want the rear tires. However, the liquid ballast folks, rim guards say slightly less if you have the ballast in there. It gives a little bit more cushion, okay, because that air pocket's smaller. So a little bit more cushion in there. I haven't found any ride difference or any ride degradation, I guess, with uh, the PSI level that is currently at and with the liquid ballast. And in fact, I think in general, machines ride smoother when they are heavier like this because they're just, less susceptible to all the smaller bumps and, and ruts and everything else that kind of plows through them a little bit better. So another option that you can look into is something called a wet tire gauge, something we don't have here. If you look that up, it could be a good solution for you folks with liquid ballast in your tires. Okay, last thing we're gonna do, this is where that Sharpie comes into play. We're gonna double check our wheel torques, all right? And then we're gonna mark it both on the nut and on the wheel, just a little line, okay? So as long as that line stays aligned, then we know nothing's changed on our wheel torque or our bolts haven't started to loosen up or anything like that. If you can visually see that the line has shifted, that it's not one complete line, it's now two lines, one on the nut and a different one on the wheel, well, you know your, your nuts are starting to back off a little bit and it's time to tighten them up. And you're gonna notice we are using an extension, okay? So this is going to reduce the amount of, or lower the amount of torque, I believe it is, so you, I don't know the equation. Somebody out there can chime in and tell us how much more uh, you need to add. And there's got to be some sort of scientific equation, but it's probably the length of the extension has to do with it too. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to get it close today and read the comments section. There's always all sorts of useful information down there. We're just giving you the basics. Okay, so the front wheel rim, 53 pound feet. The rear, 103. We'll go ahead and do the front first. I got that one already set up on here. I bumped it up a couple PSI, or uh, a couple foot pounds, I should say. So let's get her done. When you hear that click, you know it's reached the right setting. And you don't need to go fast, go slow. You don't want to go beyond that limit. Was that it? There it was. Okay, we'll get this thing adjusted, just loosen the lock nut. So 103 pounds, but we'll, like I say, bump it up a few. Hang on, hang on. There's 101, 102, 103. Let me go to 105, a couple more. I don't know if a couple more is sufficient or not. Be nice in the comments section, would you? Provide constructive feedback so we can learn okay repeat for the rears so obviously checking the torque setting is a little bit more work not something you need to do all the time because once you get the torque where it needs to be and you mark it, then it's just a quick visual walk around the machine to make sure nothing has changed and that your wheels aren't gonna fall off because you may think it's not gonna happen, but man, you hear stories about it happening and that's about the last thing I wanna experience, especially if I'm on like a hill or some already, I don't know, less than perfectly flat scenario. Boy, that's just asking for a rollover or a disaster to happen. As far as that giveaway goes, now Lube Shuttle was generous enough to offer up five free homeowner kits to five different winners. So that's pretty darn awesome. And of course, they've been a Discount Club member for a long time. So if you want to get something on their website, you use code GWT to save 5% off of your order. Without a doubt, we get a ton of positive feedback from Lube Shuttle owners. It really does make a big difference in greasing. 
The easier it is to do, the more often you're gonna do it, the longer your tractor is gonna last too. So how to win is simple. The image that you're seeing right now, a golden grease image is gonna be hidden somewhere on our website, goodworkstractors.com. No, it's not in a YouTube video. No, it's not on Facebook. It's nowhere else. You find it hiding somewhere in, in a listing, somewhere on our website, all right? Just look through there, see what you can see. Somewhere you're gonna find it. Folks have already been finding it. You have to submit your entry by midnight, the last day of March, 2023, in order to be entered. This is good for the 48 contiguous states in the United States only. So no Hawaii, no Alaska, no Canada, I'm sorry. So you need to email me at support at goodworkstractors.com the link to the listing that contains that hidden image. Put your name in there, your phone number, your email address, all that kind of, you know, your contact stuff. So I have that there too to be entered. It's easy enough to do. Official rules are below the description as well as shown on the screen. So folks, these are five easy things that you can do. Get in the rhythm. It's not gonna take you a half hour or an hour. You don't have to go plan a whole bunch of time ahead just before you're gonna get your projects done. But it is very important because that's when accidents can happen. That's when you know, deferred maintenance can cause problems. So get into a regular routine, a regular pattern of these simple things to help prevent those problems from occurring. Now I know you have more projects to tackle and we wanna help you out. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. Our prices include free shipping, rewards, and financing. So check out goodworkstractors.com to see what we have available for the front end loader and the three point hitch. If you enjoyed today's video, you wanna see more, maybe see the upcoming giveaways that we have planned, make sure you hit subscribe right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.